So everyone know that the big data, augmented reality, cloud computing, all of the components need to integrate to the educational system. At the same time, industry also need to come forward so that they can also, working with the educational institutes, especially the higher education institutes, this picture is showing that how the industry people will be one side and another people with the graduate people and how the faculty also can participate. So this bridging need to ensure so that the industry academia linkage can ensure and the universities by the teachers also can participate vigorously to developing this culture. Global linkages of Philippine academia with Asian countries and linkages between industries and academia to be presented by our next resource speakers. Dr. M.D. Saburkan, Chairman of Daffodil International University and the Daffodil family has been a leading figure in ICT and education in Bangladesh since early 1990s. He foresaw the demand for skilled IT professionals and integrated his IT expertise with traditional education to foster a self-sufficient generation. Under his leadership, the Daffodil family has executed numerous large-scale projects providing innovative ICT and education solutions. He is the president of the Association of Universities of Asia and the Pacific, or AUAP, for 2023-2024, and chairman of the Global Entrepreneurship Network, or GEN, Bangladesh chapter. He is also the WUSNI ambassador in Bangladesh and a standing committee member of the Asian University Presidents Forum. His past roles include Director of World IT and Services Alliances, Chairman of its Global Trade Committee, President of the DACA Chamber of Commerce and Industry in 2013, and President of the Bangladesh Computer Sanity, or BCS. Let us all welcome Dr. M.D. Saber Khan. Thank you very much and very good afternoon to everyone. So thank you very much again for this great initiative, the Global Linkages, which is already, I enjoyed the presentation of Attorney Paul. And really it's amazing that Philippines government and academician is came forward and they already form a one organization also, which is called Jain. And really it's amazing because without a linkage between industry and academy and especially the government initiative, it will be really very tough to sustain in the long run the educational system. So I'm quite sure that you know that a uh, university always focused to producing the graduate. I think definitely it is the time to also focus the graduates to need to ensure their skills and definitely adequate proper experience based on the wall scenario. So because without a uh, skill, I'm sure that Philippine, whatever uh, opportunity Filipino people are getting to the whole world, uh, one of the witness that Due to cause of your skill, due to cause of your uh, people's professionalism, a lot of countries prefer to recruit the Filipino staff. So this is the one of your advantage, and I'm quite sure that if you also try to develop based on the need of the industry, of course, the demand will be going to the more high. And again, uh, as already Paul is also mentioned, that uh, technological development need to ensure to the education system because we know that the a lot of this revolution is coming and we don't know that what should be the next. So you know that exploring the fourth industrial revolution, I hope that all of you may award that before seven days back, we all know that Microsoft was the world financially, they are the most uh, powerful company. We know that Elon Musk, we know that iPhone, but last seven days, the whole world scenario is already break. You know that now the NVIDIA is the world most, uh, you know, that's a earthy company. Even it was also mentioned by the New York Times that considering the Microsoft and iPhone, that is Apple, both of the assets is obviously coming to the same platform. The NVIDIA is more than wealthy company now. So that why? Because of the industrial revolution. Because NVIDIA is focusing last few years for the artificial intelligence. They also try to cope up with the market demand. So that is why I think it is time also for our in educational institution to focus how to integrate the technology. You know, a lot of the technology is available in the market. And again, artificial intelligence is also, I think, before 
three years back, it was not so popular. But last two years, everyone know about the development of the AI. So everyone know that the big data, augmented reality, cloud computing. So these sorts of all of the components need to integrate to the educational system. At the same time, industry also need to come forward so that they can also working with the educational institute, especially the higher education institutes, so that the what will be happen? This collaboration will be bringing the lot of the healthy innovation ecosystem. You know that a lot of cases uh, people are thinking that they will lost their job. But again, there is a new job will be created. I think when the new job will be created, so that means the education system need to get the assurance and get, need to take the proper precautions so that the new job, the new graduate can take the advantage and they can also contribute a lot to development of the economical aspect of the country. And definitely, as I already gave my thanks to the Filipino government, you already formed a Jain and again, I should say the government policy is definitely one of the key factor for industry and academia linkages. So industry academia linkages, I'm sure that, you know, the research and training, innovation, knowledge transfer, and these sorts of matters frequently can be increasing. At the same time, industry also need to give some grants to the relevant product or relevant commercialized aspect in respect of the ed educational strength. So universities significantly contribute the local economic growth. And definitely, as I already mentioned that, by this way, I think developing an ecosystem university can also uh, play a very good role. And few, uh, I should say, eight essential elements of university industrial collaboration. You know that the research is one of the factor and internship and definitely the co-op programs, uh, which is very uh, popularly, I think, available now in the every country is now focusing on how they should already bridging this internship in relation with the industry. And definitely, I should say that industry people can come to the advisory board in the respective fields, like few of the university has plenty of discipline. So based on the, uh, you know, there's a core expertise, I think very easily we can invite to the industry people to participate in the advisory board. And of course, it's a joint training and not only this training can organize only the university. In some cases, we can organize this training to the industry also and technology transfer. And you know that now it is entrepreneurship innovation is one of the key segment because a lot of the young people are coming forward, as I already mentioned that N NVIDIA, I think the, how they already break the all of the record to the previously is already standing. So due to cause of the innovation and entrepreneurial mindset, I think every time we are seeing a lot of the young people is coming and they become the billionaire, they are also creating a lot of the good impact. So the university need to be focused on this industry driven curriculum development and industry sponsored project. And of course, the networking and collaboration is a, one of the key tools also for joint research and facilities. And again, I should say that uh, these sorts of issues, the industry should be in one side. So this picture is showing that how the industry people will be one side and another people with the graduate people and how the faculty also can participate. So this bridging need to ensure so that the industry academy and linkers can ensure and the universities where the teachers also can participate vigorously to developing this culture. Because strong industry academia collaboration could make government's efforts also more worthy. As again, I mentioned that Adonis Paul, whatever he also mentioned that how the Department of uh, Labor and Employment is already taking a lot of good initiative and a lot of the policy making. So by this way, industry academia collaboration, of course, the government is going to be the most beneficiary because at the end of the day, government is always trying to get the economical development, government trying to collect the more tax, more facility, giving the benefit to the, their uh, people so that the infrastructure and other facility can develop. So if the industry academia collaboration economical backbone is going to be strong, ultimately government is getting the most benefit. So I hope that industry should in search of the right university because there is a plenty of university now in every country. It is the time also to find out the best university, which university is really focused, which faculty is really equipped for a move to the industry. That's need to be also searching in the property. And again, at the same time, outcome-based curriculum need to develop because you see that if we are following the traditional uh, course curriculum, so it will be tough to judge the proper student because the student, whenever sitting in front of the class of the teacher, I think the teacher, if measured the everyone with the same equal uh, position, that you, you cannot find out the right entrepreneurial minded student or innovative minded student. So that's why the course curriculum need to be also redesigned based on the outcome based development. And the student and other participants also can be evaluated and giving the training based on their need.
Industry should collaborate with the academy to create skilled people. As we already mentioned, that without skill, it is impossible to sustain in the long run. I think, again, I should say that the uh, Department of Labor and Employment already, they take a lot of the initiative where I found that a lot of the stakeholders, those who are also working for the creating the skilled people. Because without skilled people, no country can sustain also. The university is also in the long run will not be sustained because the alumni, when they will not get the job, they will not refer to the other people that the to take the admission to this university. So creating the skilled people should be the also the another sustainable model for the any university. So few of the initiative what we are taking in our university, as you know, that I am representing AUAP president, but at the same time, I am representing of the Daphne International University, Bangladesh. So I'm just giving some uh, just a quick glimpse that how we are working. We have almost 520 international partner who are working. We have one fantastic uh, component we invite to the all of the successful entrepreneur to the university. And they are also conducting with a lot of their uh, experience to the student. They spare their time. They share their experience. They invited the, our student to their industry. So by this way, we can try to making the strong collaboration with the industry and academia. We are already giving the free laptop to each and every student. Until today, almost more than 60,000 laptop we distributed to the, our student. This is one of the key components for giving the laptop. So the student should getting the uh, real and commercial and industry demand various project uh, through using their laptop. So this is uh, the skill and career development program is also ensured associated with this laptop distribution. Because before getting laptop, we also try to student so that they should focus on the skill and career development, various component which we develop. Because so that the before getting laptop, they must ensure that they already develop this all of these key factors. And we also took a lot, take a lot of this uh, uh, initiative of this innovative technology, as I already mentioned, the blending learning center, which is really giving a huge benefit in the COVID time. At the COVID time, we are the one university, 100% we are comply with our requirements due to cause of our uh, BLC, that is technology. And we also have a, a Go Edu platform. It is locally in Bengali. So students, whenever they need the, some courses like career and other things, uh, they can very easily go to the site and they can uh, list it and getting their resources to the online. And international online and university, we are partnering with the international online university so that this... Uh, Teachers, so whenever they are conducting any of the class, which class is already going to be most popular and innovative and technology oriented, they already uploaded their course to the international online university. I hope that some of the Philippine university will join also this international online university platform. It's a very fantastic because almost 17 plus universities join this platform. So we are also one of the key contributor of this international online university. So this is a great forum also that where you can use the technology so that the anywhere in the whole world, I think you student can uh, getting the benefit through this online university. We also form a one uh, department first time in the country and maybe first time also in the Southeast Asia because we also established this in department in 2014. And as, a, as per the record in that time, no university in Southeast Asia was implemented this innovation and entrepreneurship department. Is giving a huge benefit because the student going to the industry, talk with the industry, they invited to the industry people. So by this way, we are trying to bring an unbelievable strength among the university. From our definite family, that is, we have the, our group of companies. So from the group of companies, we also form a one company for helping our student. It's called the venture capital. So we are giving our student an entrepreneurship development fund. Entrepreneurship development fund, we have the almost more than three million US dollar fund. So we are giving this fund to the student without any interest, without any service charge. They are getting the fund, they start their company, and when they are uh, earning the money, they back the money without any interest. So we are just imposing that if they make the profit, they can give us some profit. If no profit, just base money. If they back it, then we are happy. Uh, so we also developed some business incubator inside the campus and also associated with the Knowledge Valley, another co-working space. So the student, whenever they are showing their innovation and entrepreneurship activities, they can easily work there. Some of the activities we are doing based on the uh, competition. And a lot of this industry now came to our university and they are doing a lot of the sports recruitment for. So this is now, now uh, one of our great success. I should say that it was one of our dream that 20 years back that uh, employer will come, industry will come to our university and they will recruit it directly. So now there is a job fair. And even we also introduced the teaching apprenticeship so that the industry people also invite. So giving the teaching idea to how the, our teachers should 
equip them for giving the proper skill education. And last year, uh, last year, so we also successfully organized, not last year, this year, I think before, uh, maybe four months back, we also organized the first time in the country, that's 9 March, the definitely placement celebration. We organized this celebration because the whatever student after getting the graduate, how much they are getting the job, who are they and which company they are doing. So we invited all of our placement students and they celebrated in the whole day. So by this way, the other student is also get confidence that how their uh, alumni or how their alma is already getting the opportunity. So to conclude this linkage between industry and academia worldwide, a unique opportunity to address complex global challenges and definitely which I already repeatedly mentioned, we need the collective efforts. So the without collective efforts, I'm sure that it will not be possible to make successful. I appreciate your attention and welcome any question if you have, and thank you very much. Let us give a virtual round of applause to Dr. M.D. Sabur Khan. Wow, that's a lot of uh, sharing, Dr. Khan. And just allow me to share and repeat the initiatives of Daffodil International University. I have implemented various initiatives to bridge the gap between academia and industry. And to name a few, academic collaborations with business industries, introduction of one student, one laptop initiative, skill and career development programs like GoEd, AC, and International Online University, establishment of the Department of Innovation and Entrepreneurship, then Entrepreneurship Development Fund and Daffodil Business Incubator to support startups, and also the programs such as the Spot Recruitment, Teaching Apprenticeship, and Daffodil Placement Celebration Day to enhance student employability and industry readiness. Thank you so much for this generous sharing of your best practices.